So this is how you use switch node in N8N. -N. So let's say you have a customer CSV, which has got all the queries from your customer. Let's say you're running some sort of clothing brand and all the queries have come up uh, into some sort of sheet. Uh, and then you have a specific category assigned to that customer query. So let's say if you have some sort of workflow that you need to do something based on the customer query. So I'll just demonstrate this out with a sample example. Okay, so I have a manual trigger over here. You can go and just search for this note that does manual trigger. Okay, so you'll find this. Then what I need to do is read from this specific CSV. To, to do that, I'll just use the Google Sheets notes. Okay, and then the operation that I'll do is get rows. Okay, for this get rows, I first need to use my credential. So I'll just go and create a credential. So if you happen to, you know, uh, do, if you don't have the credential, you can pretty much go through their docs. Uh, you need like some sort of Google account and all of that. So I already have a, a tutorial explaining how to get this credential. So I'll just basically log in using my credentials. Uh, and then what I'll do is continue. I'll give access to whatever it's asking and then continue. Okay. Just, yeah. So now with this credential setup, uh, you will basically be able to connect your Google Sheet to N10. Uh, what I'll do is select the sheet within document. The operation that I'm trying to do is get rows. And from the list, I'll select the specific sheet. So this was switch no tutorial. Okay. And from the sheet, I'll basically use sheet one. So this is the sheet one over here, this one. Okay. And now once you execute this step, you will basically be able to get all the rows. Let's say if you execute the steps, so you got 100 items over here. So if you see the count is 100 over here. Okay. So this is excluding the header. Um, now what you need to do is, let's say if you want to do something based on the category. Okay. So you go and add a new node, which is switch node. So we can route things up based on the rules that we have. So we can have rules and we can have expressions as well. So the thing is, let's, for, for keeping things simple, I'll use rules. So what you need to do is based on this category, you get to do whatever X, Y, Z that you have in the workflow. So let's say category is services. Okay. Uh, I'll just rename this to uh, services and I'll rename the output as services. Okay. So I understand where exactly this is going. I will add another rule over here, which is category. Let's say if it is equal to general inquiry. Okay. Uh, third routing rule that I want to do is, let's say if the category is, let's say order returns. Okay. So there are three categories that I'll add in the rule, routing rules, and then I'll bring in the output as order returns. Okay. So I will first try to give you the output uh, based on what we did, and then we'll explain exactly what happened over here. Okay. So if you execute the step, what really happens is if you just run your workflow again, okay. So out of 100 items, you get to filter out based on the three, you know, routing rules that we have. So for services, we don't have any items. For general inquiry, we got three items. For order returns, we got three items. That means you can pretty much do, you know, anything that you want to do over here. Maybe you can, you know, pass it to open AI node, okay. Maybe you can pass it to another Google Sheet nodes, right? Or you could just possibly be running some sort of AI flow with these three items, right? So this is how you use the switch node based on the rules. And then there is a default fallback that you can add as well. So you can always make sure convert types when required. That means n tries to explicitly make sure that all the data type that you are trying to enter to this node is basically converted automatically. And then you can also add a fallback output which means if none of that, you know, is match, you basically have to output some sort of item. So if you want none, that is fine. If you want to keep some items by default, so you can, let's say, keep, you know, services or general inquiry or, or order returns, like whichever you want to keep by default, if nothing gets matched. So this is how you use your switch node. And there is, there is one more question that I guessed a lot, which is around, you know, how to use like how how does it differentiate with if node? So if you go to if node, okay. So for if node, you have got a value and basically you have a condition and the value, okay. And you can add like multiple conditions in the same node as well. The thing is, 
it differentiates with the if node on based of the true and false value. So what happens is, let's say if you have some sort of condition coming up, so you can only output two values, either if true or if false, which is kind of a limitation if you have that in a workflow. Uh, again, you can't be using switch node every single time, that is for sure. But yeah, for, for if node, there is a differentiation based on, you know, you only need to use uh, the node if you are deterministic about some cases where it can go in true and false, like or false. So this is how, uh, you know, you will be able to select if your use case uh, is more of, or, you know, can be built on if node or the switch node. So I also happen to run a community, which is go build with AI.com. Okay. So wherein I have like all the nodes that I'm, I have already explained uh, in edited can master all of the node over here. And then thanks for watching the video.